In this lesson, we're going to build the wheel assembly for the dumpster. All right, so in this final lesson, we're going to build the assembly uh, for the wheels, and then we're going to finish up our final details. So to get started here, let's go to our front view, and we're going to um, create just a simple box that is going to encompass around the wheel. So I'm going to left click and drag, and I'm going to go down to about the bottom of that center portion of the wheel, that pivot, and I'm going to release, give myself just a little bit of thickness. Let's pull that object over, and we're going to center this up on the wheel itself. So with this box, let's go to our hierarchy panel, effect pivot only, center to object. Okay. Now with this, I'm going to go ahead and align that box to the wheel, and I'm going to hit OK. Let's drag that up in the Y a little bit to where it's just above the wheel, and then we're going to scale it in the Y. So that way it's giving us a little bit of an outside edge. Now with this box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of the geometry here in the middle. Now I can't just start deleting polygons um, in the middle because I don't have any segments to delete. So let's create those segments. Let's convert it to editable poly and let's go to edge mode and let's start creating those segments that we need. Let me go ahead and change the color of this object and I'm going to go ahead and just switch it to black and then apply our material that we have on our object here. And with that edge selected, let's go to ring and connect. Let's split that into two segments and use our pinch to spread that apart. Let's go to where that segment is just on the outside of the wheel. Let's hit OK. And then let's create one more segment right across the top here. So select that ring, so select that edge, ring, and connect. Let's make sure it's set to 1 and our slide will pull that up here. Let's hit OK and now we have the polygons um, ready so we can get rid of those. So let's go to polygon mode. Let's select this polygon, one across the bottom and the back. Let's hit delete. Now we have this gap that we need to bridge. So we've been using border and um, using bridge to gap or to get rid of that gap. But you'll notice here that this board, uh, border is continuous all the way around. So it's not going to bridge. So if I go ahead and hit bridge, notice that nothing happens. So instead what I need to do is go to edge mode and select the edges that I want to bridge from and to. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select these three edges on the back and then select the same three edges on the front. Let's hit bridge and now that has been uh, bridged across. Now with this particular object, if we go to our front view, this assembly is going to mount to the dumpster right here at the corners. And normally with the dumpster, the wheel is kind of offset, so that way it allows for maneuverability. The assembly is not straight on it like this. So let's go ahead and change its shape a little bit. Let's go to edge mode and we should be there and let's select all of the edges right here in the middle okay? and that's going to be the rings and we're going to use connect and let's take the slide and pinch amount back down to zero and let's set this to two segments now looking at this I'm going to hit F3 I want the bottom of this assembly to be right here on my uh, just below that center piece there. So I'm going to hit OK and let's go to vertex mode. I'm going to take all of these vertices right here and pull those up just a little bit. So we'll go to something right along in there and then I'm going to take these and I'll pull those up to right about here. So now I'm going to take uh, these vertices and I'm going to pull those over okay, just to kind of offset that and then I'm going to take the wheel and I'm going to match that up. So I'm going to bring it right over into here. Okay, so now with our assembly, if I hit F3 and go back to our shaded view, it looks pretty good except for I don't like the, the square corners. So let's round this out some. 
let's go to um, edge mode and select this edge and ring. Let's use connect. Let's do two segments and hit OK. I'm going to take the corners in my front view. I'm going to take these vertices on the corners and drag those straight up. And that should round that out some. If you want, you could also scale those in a little bit more. Now I'm looking at this and I may want to add one more segment in the middle. Okay, so let me scale those apart. Okay. And you'll notice that it's not scaling all that well because they're offset now. So how do we how do we do this? Well, they're no longer centered on one another, and it's going to be a little difficult to do. So we'll have to come in and do this manually now. So we'll just move that over individually, just like that. Okay, so now that we have this, let's add one more segment right here in the middle. So I'm going to do connect, and let's take our settings and let's set that to one, and hit OK. Now I'm going to go to vertex mode and take this vertex and pull that down. So now we've got that rounded look there. Okay, so now we have the wheel assembly, and now what we want to do is we want to uh, create a set of polygons that are going to come down from the dumpster and attach to the assembly. So let's select the dumpster and we're going to take the polygons on the corners just like so and looks like we've got a little bit of an issue here with our polygons. Now whenever you have something like this um, your, your polygons have been offset um, you may have moved something by accident and it looks like I've done that it's really easy to fix. So to get started, let's go ahead and just select the edges that are affected on this. So it's going to be this edge, this one, and then all the way down. So I could actually double click on that and it should go to there. And it's not going to because of this intersection, but that's okay. So we have all of those edges that are affected by that move. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to straighten that out by using Make Planar. So let's scroll down and we're going to make planar in the Y direction. So it straightens that out and then all I have to do is move that over in the Y. If I go to my left view and it looks like my viewport is on a little wonky there. There we go. So in my left viewport I want to make sure that this line is straight up and down with this line. So I'm going to move that over and I'm going to get it really close. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but we've got it very close now. So now that we've straightened that up, let's go to polygon mode and let's continue to select those polygons. Now what we want to do is we want to bevel that, okay? And let's make sure that we're beveling by group and we're going to extrude that down and then we're going to set our inset amount a little bit lower so that way the uh, polygons are not crossing one another. But I don't feel like that that's beveling quite enough. I, I just want it to bevel a little bit more, but I, I don't have enough room using the bevel tool. Well, a way to get around this is to actually use extrude and then scale the polygons. So let me extrude that down to about two and a half. And let me go over here and let me see here if we're resting right on that. And we are fairly close. Let me take that down just a little bit. There we go and we're just going to hit OK. So we don't have that bevel, but what I can do is I can use my scale tool and scale those polygons down. Okay. So notice how the lines are not crossing one another. Okay. And no matter how far I scale down, they still will not touch. So here's an advantage of using scale and extrude instead of bevel alone. So now that we have that, We've got our bevel amount. Let's go ahead and set our wheel and position that properly. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate it to the back. And I'm going to make sure that it's an instance because if I make one change to one, I want it to change the other. That's set. Now let's select both of those wheels and let's duplicate that. So hold down control and bring that over, make that an instance, and we'll hit OK. So that looks centered. There we go. 
So now we have the wheels assembled and now we have one final detail that we want to take care of and that's going to be uh, the supports that are on the truck mounts. So these are going to be fairly easy to create. We're going to create these using a separate object. We don't need to add the segments for this because it would uh, it would begin to complicate things. Now if you wanted to you could go ahead and build it out of one solid object. You could add those segments in have complete faith that you could do that. But I find that it would be easier to just create a box and turn it into a triangle and then duplicate that. So here in my front view I'm going to left click and drag and I'm going to drag that out to about the size that I want that mount to be and then give it a height and then we'll right click to end that. Let's convert it to edible poly. Let's put it into position and then let's get the thickness that we want for that support. So it's fairly thin. Once we have that, let's go ahead and go to vertex mode by hitting one on the keyboard. I'm going to right click and target weld the top vertices into one another, creating this triangle. Now I know that we've said that ingons are bad and we normally want to model using quads only, but sometimes triangles are necessary and there's sometimes there's no way around them. So on minor details like this, it's okay. So now let's duplicate this. Hold down shift, drag that out, duplicate it. I'm going to make one more copy of that and make sure that it's an instance and then hit OK. Now that I have those pieces, I'm going to select all of those, hold shift, I'm going to drag those down make those an instance and hit OK and then let's rotate them 180 degrees. Let's make sure that our snap toggle is on. There we go, 180. And then we may need to reposition that onto that truck mount just a little bit. And let's select all six of those. Let's hold shift, drag that over, make those an instance and hit OK. Let's make sure that they are position properly to where the corners are touching uh, the outside part of the dumpster and then right out to this point. And then we're going to rotate them 180 degrees on the Y and then make any adjustments to your movement. Okay, And there we go. So now you can come in, you can select those. Let's change their color to black so that way we get that black wireframe and then apply our material. Okay, and that material should be in your project file. Okay, so we have everything finished here. We've created the lids, we've created all of the pieces, but more importantly, the main focus of this course was to show you lots of tools and techniques that are commonly used, most commonly used, using box modeling techniques. So remember, with box modeling, it's not just about modeling from a box, it's modeling from a primitive and then building large forms and then gradually building in the smaller forms and working down to the finer details. Okay, so now that you've finished the course, we want to talk about your final assignment here. So your assignment uh, between level one and level two is to create an object uh, using the box modeling techniques. Now it could be any object that you want. Um, throughout this uh, particular set of courses we're going to be following along with a certain theme and uh, we'll kind of unravel that as we progress uh, throughout the courses. But I want you to build something um, that's kind of industrial. So something like a dumpster or a generator, um, an air conditioning unit or something like that. Um, you could do a Google search and you could find some reference images of what you would want to build and start to study that and start thinking about okay here's where I'm going to put some segments to create this shape this is what tool I'm going to use to create this form and, and, and things like that. So to get started with this I've got a couple of images for you if you want to uh, just kind of follow along. Um, and do one of the assignments that I provided for you. Uh, the first image is a dumpster. So this is for you if you are getting the hang of it but you still need some help and you're still trying to understand a lot of the different tools and 
you're having a little bit of trouble coming up with something on your own. Uh, using this dumpster as a reference, I want you to build it out exactly the way that you see it. And you should be able to still follow along with the tutorial with some help and should be able to get some ideas on how to create the different shapes uh, that you see in this. Um, a lot of the elements are still very much the same. It's the same type of form. It's just that the, some of the elements are just slightly different in some ways. So this is if you want to just kind of follow along and you're still trying to get the hang of things. Now if you want to move forward and you want to do your own thing, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the next item that I have is something like a generator. So you could take this image and build it out in 3ds Max. And at this point, you would start to look at the overall primitive that you would use to start out to create it, and then you would start to add segments in the areas that are needed. So, um, for example, like you might need a segment right here because there's a change in shape. Um, right in here, you'll need a, a segment to possibly extrude out this edge here. Okay, all of those things you want to start thinking about. And so, as soon as you start seeing images and you start getting ideas on what tools uh, you would use to create this part of the object and where segments are going to go, you're getting the hang of the box modeling method. Okay, so now you're going to uh, go ahead and do your assignment. And if you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and post those to the forum. We try to get those uh, as soon as possible.